As we enter the new year, we focus on frankly one of the easiest videos I've ever produced. The amount of material out there on the Trappist-1 star system is pretty much unrivalled in terms of exoplanets. This is because Trappist-1 is home to the largest batch of roughly Earth-sized planets ever found outside our solar system. Discovered in 2016, some 40 light years away, these seven rocky siblings offer a glimpse at the tremendous variety of planetary systems that likely fill the universe. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're focusing on a much requested video, the Trappist-1 system. So, let's get to it. When we look at the habitable zone of Trappist-1, we immediately see that B and C are likely too hot for habitation. But after that, pretty much all the planets from D through to H could potentially be habitable worlds, give or take. So, I've decided for the purposes of this video that for now, we'll forget about B and C, and assume they are Venus-like hell worlds, and concentrate on the other five. I do reserve the right to be corrected at any point in the future though. Trappist-1d is small at 30% the mass of Earth, and the least massive planet of the system. It's thought likely to have a compact, hydrogen-poor atmosphere, probably similar to Venus, Earth or Mars. It receives 4.3% more sunlight than Earth, and this places it on the inner edge of the habitable zone. Given its proximity to Trappist-1 star, the planet is likely an eyeball planet, and it's tidally locked, meaning one hemisphere permanently faces the star while the other does not. Next up is Trappist-1e. The planet has a radius of around 0.9 Earth radii. It's likely a rocky planet. Despite also being likely tidally locked, in 2018 it was determined that the planet is one of the most Earth-sized worlds found at 93% the surface gravity. Trappist-1e is cool enough for liquid water to pool on the surface, but not too cold for it to freeze, and the temperature ranges from minus 48 degrees Celsius to minus 27.1 Celsius, depending on how much light the planet reflects into space. Both of these are between those of Earth and Mars. In addition, its atmosphere is confirmed not to be dense or thick enough to harm the habitable potential as well. And according to models by the University of Washington, the atmosphere, if it is strong enough, may also help transfer additional heat to the dark side of the planet. Trappist-1e is undoubtedly a cooler world, and in this graphic we see travellers coming in to land at a human outpost somewhere in the mysterious blue world. Let's hear the sounds then of Trappist-1e. has a radius about the same as the Earth, it's around 1.045 Earth radii, but only about two-thirds of Earth's mass, at around 0.68. So this means it's substantially less dense, and is considered somewhat unlikely to be a full rocky planet, and extremely unlikely to be an Earth-like one with a large iron core, but without a thick hydrogen helium atmosphere enveloping the planet. Simulations strongly suggest the planet is approximately 20% water by composition, and that's much higher than our Earth. With one hemisphere again permanently facing the star, while the opposite side is shrouded in eternal darkness. If it is an ocean world, depending on how currents work and flows, it could be a very interesting place. We know on Earth here, for example, the Antarctic convergence means that places like the Falklands, also known in Spanish as the Malvinas, can be inhabited, but once the cold water of the Southern Ocean flows between it and South Georgia, South Georgia and the island chain south of the convergence are ice capped permanently and winter islands. Now I'm not a planetary geologist, but surely if warm currents circulating from the daylight side swirled towards the so-called terminator line of Trappist-1f, where the temperatures may be suitable and around zero degrees or above, permanent rain cycles could lead to water pooling, at first in lakes and valleys until eventually leading to huge dark side oceans covered in ice. It would be quite an astonishing sight to see the change in topography over such a short distance. Alternatively, a much larger portion of the planet may be habitable if it supports a thick enough atmosphere to transfer the heat to the side facing away from the star, and maybe liquid water could spread more evenly. If we were to find the Trappist-1 star itself, we would first have to start with the constellation of Aquarius, on the opposite side to the brightest stars of Sadol Malik and Sadol Sud. We find that Trappist-1 is more or less in between Lambda and Phi Aquarii, but unfortunately, with an apparent magnitude of over 10, it's actually invisible to the naked eye. In fact, it's barely a star at all, and has the designation of M85, and makes it amongst the smallest of possible stars that can exist. As we continue our sweep through the planets, we arrive at Trappist-1g, the second most distant planet known in its system, 
Trappist-1g is a planet strangely larger than the Earth, yet less dense, meaning it likely hosts some form of water, or could even be potentially a gas dwarf. The planet is likely covered by a thick ice envelope if an atmosphere does not exist to keep it warm. And of course, we know that life is possible underneath such a place, or such an ice shelf, but I'm not sure it's really what our hearts are looking for. A thick atmosphere, however, could of course change everything. We must take up with a pinch of salt many of these predictions, as there are so many variables that can change everything. Unfortunately, it's not heavy enough to be one of the so-called Hyacian worlds, as it would likely have lost all its light elements of hydrogen and helium to outer space. But that said, with a relatively thick atmosphere, Trappist-1g could indeed have a global water ocean, or some suggest it could harbour an exceptionally thick steam atmosphere lying over supercritical ice. The outlier, Trappist-1h, is smaller than Earth with a radius of 0.77 Earth radii and a mass of just 0.33. This places the planet somewhere in between the sizes of Earth and Mars with about 56% of Earth's surface gravity. It's thought like Mars to harbour less than 5% water, meaning it could be very very similar to the red planet. It only receives about 13% of the stellar flux that Earth does, as so has an equilibrium temperature of minus 104 degrees Celsius, which is similar to that of the Earth's south pole. Despite this, its orbit would still sit inside Mercury's orbit around the Sun, at about 0.38 astronomical units. Shorter then of extreme tidal heating, or by some unknown mechanism holding on to a thicker atmosphere than Mars, or perhaps even Earth, it remains possible but unlikely that Trappist-1 could harbour Earth-like conditions for life and therefore is likely more an exo-Mars than an exo-Earth, and that therefore slips down the scales of our interest quickly. When we look at our own solar system, within it we find a Jovian system with four large moons and a huge gas world. All four moons orbit fairly close to the world on a solar system scale, and are all tidily locked to the giant Jovian planet, and this is not unlike Trappist-1. Sure, the star is much heavier than Jupiter, but in many ways apart from this, both are mini solar systems in their own right. The difference being that Trappist-1 exerts enough heat to make its planets viable, whereas Jupiter does not. The most likely suspects for life are the planets E and F, but it is not exclusive to them and them alone. Life could also have spawned on the inner world of D and the cooler outer worlds of G and H. An astonishingly strange yet intriguing system, the faint, dim red star Trappist-1 almost paradoxically remains one of humans kind's brightest lights in the search for life outside of these shores. Let's hope that one day in the not too distant future, we can conclude one way or the other that life exists in this mini exoplanetary system. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. If you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. It could just be your idea next week that shows up. Thanks again to all those that do comment take good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.